Hi, I'm Dr. Kalika. I'm a clinical director of New York Dynamic Neuromuscular Rehabilitation. And we're going to talk about diastasis recti. I have a patient here, Lindsay. And how many months are you postpartum? Four. Four months. And uh, you weren't sure exactly what you have, but you thought you, sh you should check it out. What alarmed you and what brought you in? Um, I was having a bit of bulging. A bit of bulging, right? You didn't feel like you have a split, anything, but it just didn't look the same way it did before the pregnancy. Uh, so uh, we're going to shut off the light. We're going to show you everything on ultrasound because ultrasonography is the only sure way to know what's going on and you'll see it yourself once we put the probe on her belly. Alright, so we're going to measure this diastasis close to the umbilicus and it gets really tricky. So this is one end of the muscle and I have to really find the other end which is right there and then put them together. So this is the picture. This is it. So right on top of the umbilicus, it's about 2.5. But if I go up, and now I have again two muscles in the view. I will start here, get it here, and get it right about to there. So as soon as I go right above the umbilicus, it decreases. So if we were to put it in a, in a longitudinal way and scan the whole linear alba, it would be normal at the top, going down, increasing a little bit, and then increasing even more closer to the umbilicus, and then really increasing over the umbilicus, and then passing the umbilicus, it would be decreasing again. So the diastasis recti is around two millimeters, two point something uh, in its length, in, uh, in its width actually, and between two and three is kind of where physical therapy can help. Anything wider than three centimeters requires surgery. Uh, and also it depends on the length of the uh, diastasis. Her length is not really long. Uh, so this is how we measure diastasis, recti and ultrasonography. Uh, but that's the, the split is not the only thing that women have problem with. Uh, what bothers is actually the bulging. So the bulging is another interesting component which we can measure with um, with movement. And this movement is called auto cue. So the patient lifts the head and we measure. So I'm going to demonstrate this now. So we put the probe again, and we're going to ask Lindsay to lift, to lift, and as she lifts. We can freeze that and we can see that the space decreases. And when I can see that the space decreases at least 30% or 40%, I know that this is easy to react and it's going to be a positive outcome. But another thing I'm looking at is bulging. So lift the head again. How much did that lift? Um, did, did the muscle here lift it up? And it really, uh, try it again and, and we will see again. So from here, go up, it really was a very small lift. So that's another component. So the severe bulging is where that rectus abdominis completely so bulging pops up. So these three components, we look at the size, anatomical size of different regions of uh, the, the abdominal wall. We look at what happens with the size of abdominal wall when someone lifts the head or lifts the leg, and then we we'll look at bulging. Uh, the other interesting component is pelvic floor, and that requires perhaps another video on its own, but that's another uh, thing that we look at when we um, try to estimate the size and rehabilitability and the probability and the time of how long it would take to rehabilitate diastasis recti. Thank you.